In a world filled with busy schedules and endless distractions, taking charge of your health has never been more crucial. Welcome to a journey of empowerment, education, and well-being with Health Check with Dr. Noristani. Hello everyone, and welcome to Health Check with Dr. Noristani. PTSD is a widespread issue among veterans. It's estimated that up to 30% of Vietnam War veterans, 20% of Iraq War veterans, and 11 to 20% of Afghanistan War veterans are experiencing symptoms of PTSD. These statistics remind us that many veterans carry the heavy burden of trauma even long after their services has ended. Today, we have a special guest, Brandon Waraman, a proud military veteran, Purple Heart recipient, uh, entrepreneur. He was deployed to Afghanistan in 2011, and after returning home from combat, Brandon saw the epidemic of mental illness in his fellow veterans. He co-founded Reboot, a drug treatment center in Utah, combining physical, emotional, and cognitive therapies to address addiction and prevent relapse. Brandon is currently developing a VR platform and uh, conducting more research to lead to scalable and affordable treatment for PTSD and shape the future of virtual reality therapies. About seven to eight percent of people will experience PTSD at some point of uh, their lives. That's about 12 to 14 million people currently suffering from PTSD in the United States. Women are twice as likely as men to develop PTSD. PTSD is more common in people who have experienced multiple traumas. Professions with the most likely to have PTSDs are military, obviously, due to significant amount of uh, trauma that they are exposed to, uh, police officers, firefighters, emergency medical and ambulance uh, personnel, healthcare workers, including your physician, nursing staff, or anybody here uh, that works in health-related field, journalists, and first responders. They are the people who are constantly exposed to some form of uh, trauma on a daily basis. For veterans, these events can range from combat experiences to military sexual trauma, and even the challenges of transitioning to civilian life. During the next few minutes, we will embark in a journey to better understand PTSD and veterans, explore the unique challenges they face, and highlight the strength and resilience that defines their experiences. It is crucial to emphasize that understanding PTSD in veteran is not just a matter of sympathy, but of empathy and support. Our veterans have sacrificed so much for their countries, and it's our responsibility to ensure they receive the care and assistance they need. We'll be right back after these messages. Did you know chemotherapy side effects are greatly reduced when the acid in your body is diluted? Learn how Balance 7 can support your well-being during treatment. Visit balance7.com or call 1-800-793-9039. Welcome back. Brandon, thank you so much for being with us. I really appreciate your time. I know you're a busy man and doing multiple projects. So let's dive right into it. I'm very excited, by the way, of what you are gonna tell us about, about your experience, and also I'm just really excited about your virtual reality. So, I'm, uh, so let's, uh, let's get the questions started. Now, before we start about your project, uh, tell me, I mean, I want, first of all, I wanna thank you for your service, uh, for what you have done, and thank you for being here with us. So tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, if you don't mind, uh, that'd be great for our audience. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me on, Doc. I really appreciate it. Uh, I am a U.S. Army veteran. I was medically retired. I was wounded in combat in 2011. And after leaving the service, I saw a need in my community uh, with mental health. A lot, of, a lot of my friends committed suicide, a lot of drug addiction, um, and it kind of pushed me into that path of treatment and discovery on what really was causing our ailments with PTSD, 
uh, why drug addiction was so prolific in the combat arms community I was in. And it led me to found a drug rehab center. Uh, from there, I, I went into research in neurology and exited that company. Now we're taking my modalities in the clinical space and we're gamifying them into VR so we can hopefully scale and get resources to uh, many more people at a more affordable rate. Yeah, so as a physician actively practicing in a community where there's a large uh, number of uh, veterans, I'm extremely disappointed at the way veterans are handled when it comes to their health care. I think Veterans Affairs has done an extremely poor job, at best, that's putting it at, uh, at, at mildly, uh, of taking care of those people who have put their lives in the line to save us and provide us with freedoms that we have. So disappointment goes a, a long way. Now, mental health is a huge, huge issue. As you know, over uh, the, you know, millions of people are suffering, but it is the highest among veterans and you being part of it. Now, as a veteran yourself, did you suffer from PTSD you know, during, after you came back from the war? Yeah, and as, as you know, PTSD comes in lots of different forms. And so I, I of course, suffered. Um, I still kind of suffer every now and then. Everybody has their moments. Uh, death anniversaries, you know, historic events. The, the withdrawal from Afghanistan was rough on our community for those of us that went over there and lost friends and, and bled in that dirt. Um, but yeah, I, I suffered. My, my symptoms were more of uh, becoming addicted to work and research. As you know, coming from the medical field, there's not enough hours in the day when you start a study. And, uh, you know, as my wife would, tells everybody, when I first started, I, I was a zombie. I didn't do anything but read papers and, and work, you know, 19, 20 hour days for the first year or two. That's kind of what I disappeared into um, and had to really create this process, not just for my my friends, my brothers, sisters, but also myself. And that's that's what led me down that path. Um, you're not alone, obviously. About 60% of vets will get some sort of treatment from PTSD. Um, and, uh, you know, currently there's m multiple modulity of uh, treatments uh, for PTSD itself. Um, how is it better with uh, VR? Can you tell me a little bit about, first of all, to a lot of audience, maybe a lot of people don't know what is VR or virtual reality. What is it? And how is it different now uh, compared to what the current standard treatment uh, that is available for vets and everybody else around? Thank you so much for that question. So one of the, the first things I like to inform everybody is, is PTSD isn't just a, a mental illness. There's a physical component to it. Um, our research into midbrain right now is showing reduction of blood flow across the board uh, for mid and frontal cortex. And our goal was to restore blood flow to those key areas and see what the impact would be on any modality of therapy, whether it be equine therapy, cognitive therapy, dialectic behavior therapy, um, any of the talk therapies that the VA does um, or experience therapy where there, there are nonprofits out there that take veterans hunting or fishing, um, they get them back out in the wilderness. Those modalities will not work on an individual if the blood flow is not there. You can have all the awesome skills and, and you know, bells and whistles available to you, but if the blood flow doesn't exist, if it's deregulated, the impact won't be there. And so our first problem was to address blood flow. And through a, a accumulation of modalities, we figured out how to do that from a FNCI standpoint of imaging uh, before and after. We're able to see on average what a veteran with PTSD started and where he ended. And then we decided to take that and gamify it. So VR for me, you come from the clinical space. Patient resistance is, is huge. It, it's what makes or breaks a therapist. How much do you have a patient resistance with your clients? How more relatable are you? I wanted to remove that and eliminate that. VR allows us to create an immersive environment where that veneer of I'm getting therapy or I'm getting help kind of disappears and it goes into more a flow state with a fun game. Making it engaging, making it fun, and making it immersive removes patient resistance. And on top of that, putting in the modality blocks to restore blood flow, we're able to give an environment to a veteran or an individual suffering with mental illness or depression or drug addiction, a space where they can have fun, be creative, enjoy a video game, but at the same time, have some physical impact as well. And that you're not getting that in a clinic. You know, you you practice talk therapy, it doesn't exist. The, the six month status quo to build the relationship takes so much time and effort, it's not scalable. 
And most therapists aren't good at what they do, so it doesn't happen to begin with. They're there for an hour and they're on to the next case. We're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we have a lot to talk about. Al Simon, I'm 91. I created Balance 7 when I was 70. I started having problems with my body, arthritis, diabetes, and other problems. I was told this was normal for my age. For the next five years, I researched and developed the product that would bring my body into balance. When I was 75, I started drinking Balance 7. My doctors were so impressed to see how well I was doing. Now the doctor is using Balance 7 on his patients. Balance 7 is a small price to pay to bring your body back to health. Go to Balance 7, the number 7.com and change your life for the better. For $10 off and free shipping, use the code word L. Welcome back. As a physician, Brendan, I have seen, I've taken care of so many veterans. Obviously, I'm not a mental health provider, I'm not a psychiatrist or psychologist, but I'm an internal medicine physician, so for me, I take care of their uh, other issues, you know, whether they're, they have a heart attack, they had the stroke, um, a suicidal attempts, etc. And I see a huge number of patients suffering from so much mental disorder and PTSD is one of the bigger one. Um, just, you know, patient comes in, the failure rate is significant. I mean, you're talking about 40% of these people do not respond to current treatment and disability is a huge form of the, uh, those failure, right? Uh, and how do you get, and then just falling out of the program, it's so common because they just, the pro, I don't think the current mental health is structured, allow for veterans to receive the maximum amount of therapy they need. The, not only the duration of the therapy, but the way we treat this patient. I think our understanding are so much uh, different. It's better, I continue to get better. As you say, you know, now we can use a specific uh, modulities to actually see the uh, blood flow through the brain, for example. That has a huge impact because now we have data to show that what we do actually works. It translates to an actual finding, then we could see it and create data and structure a program around that kind of modulities. Uh, so you yourself as a, a VR developer, what is your strength? What, what is it that you pride yourself saying, this is why this is gonna work? So we have a couple factors that are working in our benefit. One of our factors is our team. Uh, one, our, one of our head developers was at Disney. Um, Kat, she's over at Northeastern in the Neuro Lab. So not only do we have a creative development side from uh, animation standpoint of making immersive worlds, but the team itself isn't just regular VR developers. Like everybody's coming to this with a, with a neuro background, they understand what the process is. And then again, back to our data sets, to, to be able to actually go in and map the blood flow of the brain and say, okay, this is where we started, this is where we ended up, here's a percentage growth. What are we looking at when we look at a veteran? What are we looking at when we look at a regular citizen that has depression or you know a different form of PTSD? PTSD is a very common occurrence in America because of ACE, adverse child exposure, it's not, a veteran issue. It's a everyone issue. And I tell everybody, you don't have to go to war and get shot at to have PTSD. Trauma is trauma to the individual. It doesn't matter. The brain responds the exact same way if you live under trauma. And for us as a development company, having the immersive world and having the ability to create tools that are fun and engaging, not a medical game where you, you know, you're used to it being very linear in scope. This isn't a game that uh, you would see any different than Call of Duty or you know something from Bethesda, or one of the big gaming companies of what we're creating. Um, great information on the VR itself and obviously immersion to uh, a, a 360 degree immersion on a virtual world, of course, is gonna transfer so much because it creates an environment, an adaptive environment, right? You have all the controls and in a, in a fixed space. And I think that is what is so transformative about this uh, these, uh, program. Now, how, the, you know, how, how do we identify and treat PTSD patient earlier? I mean, uh, like what is your, your one thing saying, hey, listen, we got veterans coming in from the war zone, they finished their deployment, they are back. At what stage do you think we can jump in right away saying, okay, you know what? Everybody is gonna be screened for, 
monitor, do follow-ups, and then start a treatment program right away. In your experience, is that happening in your world, in veterans' world? Yeah, so or that's such a great question. Thank you for asking that. So our our ability, there's, there's that's a two-pronged question, right? Our first one is, does the military screen? The military right now is a two-week process when you get out. They spend years training you, and they spend a two-week two period processing you out of the military and sending you off to the, the Department of Veterans Affairs, which we both know doesn't help. It, it, they're trying their best, but with socialized medicine, you can only go so far. For our side, what we're doing at Axios, actually, we have a, a contract to the company, Alarms is what they're called. So we're actually plugging into the first responder side. So the first responder world is filled with veterans, but they're also a, 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 a group of individuals who live under stress immensely all the time. And so we're actually plugging in, into their employment systems and with Alarms where we're creating a protocol based off the amount of 911 calls they go on and putting a score to the calls they respond to, child drowning, shooting, you know, fender bender, they all add up to put a score, say, hey, this individual may, you know, have the potential for prolonged exposure to trauma. Please get them into the, the VR environment. And we've created mini games so that, you know, an officer or fireman's not off the line of duty for longer than 10 or 15 minutes. So we can hit high points of blood flow while they are at work and start proactively treating trauma before you have 20 years of buildup before an officer finally leaves and goes, oh, now I'm no longer on the job. I can go see a therapist and get help. We're hoping we can impact that in the day-to-day -day, uh, activity of an officer or fire, fire, any first responder really in the field. Same thing in the medical field with, with surgeons and nurses. The faster we can get to them and work on blood flow in the brain as a, as a physician yourself, you understand, the quicker you get in there, the, the more impact you will have in, in the longevity of the treatment of that patient. Uh, we're going to continue this conversation because it's important. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dr. Ahmad Norastani, an internal medicine physician who has been taking care of thousands of patients in intensive care unit. A little over two years ago, I was introduced to a product called Balance 7. I was amazed how quickly it helped my patients. The results have been wonderful. I now recommend Balance 7 to all my patients. Order Balance 7 so you can experience great results for yourself. Go to balance7.com and improve your quality of life. Welcome back. Brandon, this is a wealth of information. You know, for a physician, I know for a fact that these patient, especially veterans, because as they say, time is so crucial. I think from my experience, when people get back from deployment, this is the time that you have to implement, not waiting two weeks to see a physician and another three weeks to do a follow-up, another five weeks. I mean, that's not good enough. Two weeks evaluation is not even merely good enough because the time for your brain to adjust to the environment takes so much longer. Now, first two weeks is almost being on a vacation. A lot of people, the impact is not really imminent at that moment, unless you know, we know for a fact that people are gonna, at least 70% of those people coming back, will gonna have some sort of PTSD that need help. So just following up these people for more than this short period of time. Obviously, with limited resources, how you can do it, and I think virtual reality could be a gap. You know, now people could just do it, maybe getting to a point where they could do it in their own safe environment uh, with limited support or limited instruction. Uh, maybe they could, uh, they have access. It's all about accessibility. Patients from here who are veteran locally here where I live, I mean, they have to go all the way to L.A., I mean, a lot of them don't have the means to get to that. A lot of them don't have the transportation. I don't have financial support. So there's so many limitations that has been created by the administration itself in order to maybe save financially, which doesn't make sense because we're spending uh, $930 million every year to just take care of PTSD on veterans, and yet we're not doing enough. So that tells me there's a huge disconnect between the type of services that we provide and the needs of veterans in each community. Allowing these uh, veterans to see other psychiatrists beyond, or social worker and everybody beyond what, you know, uh, veteran administration provide and force these patients to actually see those individual is just ludicrous, it's crazy. But nonetheless, this is, this is where we're at. Um, now, I know that you have 
done some research, you have experience now from your uh, personal experience with a lot of these veterans, with your new system, that's obviously the uh, ongoing. Um, what kind of response have you have seen so far? I mean, individually, if you could give me some example of some people that you have worked with and what kind of impact you saw, that'd be just great. So I have, I have permission for some of the, the patients we've worked with uh, to discuss them. One of them is, is an individual named Brian. He was an Air Force veteran. He was an Air Force uh, MP. And before he came to me, his symptoms of PTSD were extreme. Uh, very isolationist, couldn't make eye contact. Uh, communication was was pretty much non-existent. Reading comprehension, uh, short fuse, very prone to isolation. After spending four days with me in the VR protocol, restoring blood flow um, in a clinic setting. So this is the same thing he'd do at home with the VR, but we were in a clinic setting. We were monitoring what he ate, sleep schedule, of course, uh, brain scans. But just playing two hours a day of VR for four days, we were able to restore blood flow to his brain over 60%. And on top of that, his behavior in, I would say, spirit came back. He's He makes eye contact with you now. He's not an isolationist. His business is thriving. He's socially active again with his community and with friends. Um, he talks about on social media all the time about how, how much of an impact you know we had on his life. And we're currently in another study right now. And in this study, so far already within a week, we're seeing veterans that were not able to go to Walmart. You know, people that could not social anxiety through the roof, just playing a shooter game. They're able to reintegrate with life. They're they're able to go to Walmart. They're able to to go out with their their kids and actually go to a park. I mean, that the reintegration is huge. And I my true belief is that it's not it's not rocket science what we're doing. We're restoring blood flow to key areas of the brain that are injured. It's a physical injury, just like you have with a heart when you have a heart attack. You put a pacemaker in. Once you fix what's causing the symptoms, the symptoms will change. And it's my belief that we've been looking at mental illness wrong from the very get-go. It's, it's, it is an actual physical injury, and we have to treat it as such. The, the great thing about our VR environments and, and what we are creating and developing is that the scalability of it, like you said, it's so expensive that it's, it's in your own home. It's a cost of a VR headset, which is $400 on average right now, to be able to get in and start treating yourself. We're actually in the talks with clinics and uh, virtual therapists the you know with COVID that happened with like places like BetterHelp, uh, we're in talks them right now integrating their their ability into our program. Where if a veteran needs help, they can connect to a therapist inside the environment. And instead of being in a a room where you've had to get dressed and travel and pull yourself out of bed and all the things you already struggle with, you can now instead be at your house, throw on a headset, it puts you on a beach, and just the immersion of being on the beach already we're reducing cortisol levels. There's been hundreds of studies on that with VR. And they're talking to a therapist. It takes that stress and pressure out of treatment, and it allows a growth platitude that has never existed before. Um, there are a lot of VR companies out there that are looking at doing this. None of them are coming at it from a, a clinical setting of let's find data points and let's uh, make the game engaging around the data points and not vice versa. I love it. As a physician, once again, I'm looking about, you know, how the uh, uh, clinical, how clinically the studies are structured and what is the outcome, right? Because at the end of the day, we care, patient cares about their outcome. So I, I think this is so exciting. I know it's a sort of new field in medicine and I'm, I'm just very appreciative what you and your company is doing. Looking forward to hearing more about what you're doing down in future. I'm pretty sure we're gonna have you uh, maybe in uh, in a few months to give us more data and sample because there's millions of people who need help, this type of help, uh, which is accessible. Brandon, thank you so much for being with us. We learned so much about VR and its impact on our veterans. I want to thank you for your service and what you do for veterans. We'll be right back after these messages. I suffer from um, stomach problems due to a lot of medication. I also suffer from depression and since taking balance seven for the for the past four and a half years i see major improvements in both these areas thanks al for creating balance seven did you know acid buildup in your body is responsible for the majority of diseases discover how balance seven can help you maintain a healthy ph level visit balance seven.com or call 1-800-793-9039 1-800-793-9039 welcome back People diagnosed with PTSD 
have a tendency to show persistent symptoms and unremitting chronic course which is closely associated with high social and healthcare costs. Specifically, in the United States, veterans cost $923 million in two years just to take care of some of these issues with PTSD. Giving these high social costs effective and timely interventions needed to be established. Various types of uh, psychological intervention have been implemented to resolve PTSD and its related symptoms. Many studies have shown that trauma-focused cognitive behavior therapy, cognitive processing therapy, eye movement desensitization, and reprocessing and exposure therapy were effective for PTSD. Among these interventions, exposure therapy is regarded as the first line of treatment for PTSD with abundant evidence of its clinical efficacy. However, despite the effectiveness of physiological intervention, including exposure therapy, a major disadvantage lies in the difficulty in fully immersing subjects in traumatic scenes. This disadvantage could cause high dropout rates, negatively affecting intervention effects. Therefore, PTSD remains a difficult disorder to treat and needs for alternative intervention approaches are needed. New studies have shed light on the importance of immersive PTSD treatment using graded exposure. The findings suggest that VR could be a better option as it may present immersive trauma-related stimuli by monitoring the subject responses such as physiological or subjective stress level. In the future, more research on various types of PTSD is required to determine whether VRE could be considered a valuable tool for PTSD treatment. As we conclude our discussion on veterans and PTSD, it is essential to reflect on incredible sacrifices made by those who have served their nations. Veterans have borne the weight of duty and often the scars of trauma, and we owe them a debt of gratitude that could never truly be repaid. Veterans with PTSD are not broken. They're survivors. They are warriors who continue to fight for their well-being and the well-being of their fellow veterans. They are our neighbors, friends, and family members who deserve our unwavering support. Until next time, I'm your host, Dr. Norstani. Have a healthy and a stress-free day. Tune in to Health Check with Dr. Norstani weekly to gain insights that can transform your health journey. Let's build a healthier, happier community together. Get ready to be informed, inspired, and tune in with your health. See you on the next episode of Health Check with Dr. Noristani. The opinions and statements made by guests on this show are their own. Noble Productions does not constitute an endorsement or validation of what is discussed.